Hey guys, we're here again today, Hard Racing, working on our Yamaha R3 project bike. And today we're going to be installing the Dynajet Power Commander 5. This is a pretty straightforward, easy to install um, unit. Basically piggybacks the fuel injection system, lets you tweak uh, the fuel injection to have more optimal, better tuned motorcycle, runs a little smoother more efficient, a little more power. Basically the bike comes very choked up from the manufacturer to meet uh, DOT and EPA guidelines so this will help it free it up a little bit, make it run better. Um, it's also completely programmable for future changes if you do exhaust systems, uh, maps. Um, for those you can do, um, if you do uh, air filters or any kind of changes you do to the bike performance wise you can uh, make the changes with the power commander it also has a bunch of add-ons that you can do to it really cool um, down jet quick shifter um, map selection switch you can store multiple maps in there in case you um, you know live near the mountains and you're going to go up to a real high altitude uh, you can do a LCD or a POD display and you can also do the auto tune which is a really nice feature if you really want to get into the power commander, it basically self maps as you ride around, creating a custom map made for your bike, where you live, your altitude, your temperature, while you're out and riding. It's kind of like what a dyno does, except in our minds a little bit better because it's real world um, tuning while you're riding around. Dyno's in an enclosed room versus an auto tune is running while you're driving around. So if there's any extra performance gain by movement of air then you uh, your auto tune takes that into account so so for right now today we're just going to install the power commander we're going to go over how to install it uh, what you got to do and then uh, we'll show these add-ons in future videos okay guys so the first thing we're going to do is remove the rear seat this cover front seat and the tank cover So to get the tank cover off, you actually have to remove the side panel. Okay, so now that you have your side covers off, you're going to remove your tank cover. So you've got two bolts here, your center bolt, and then two bolts on the other side to unbolt. So you'll feel a little resistance when you pull the tank cover off and that's because there are these little pegs right here that go into the rubber boots on your actual tank. So next you're going to take a 10 millimeter socket and remove the two bolts on the front of the tank and the two bolts on the rear. So if your tank is full, it will be easier to have somebody to help you. But if it's almost empty, it is pretty easy to do it by yourself. And all you're doing is disconnecting the two vent hoses at the front of the tank and the electronic plug under the tank and the fuel line. So next we need to gain access to these coils. So we are going to remove these two eight millimeter bolts.
So now that you have the two bolts removed, you need to gain access to the front of these wires on the coils. So next we're just going to go ahead and install the power commander. So the easiest way to start is to unbolt the tray and just route, in order to route the wires forward, you're going to need to come up underneath it to mount your power commander and that way everything's nicely tucked underneath that tray. Okay, so just a quick note, what we did was we cut a just a little small notch uh, to allow for the wire to come directly out of the tray. Uh, that way it doesn't get caught up right around where you put your rear seat and just kind of makes a nice cleaner look as well. Wire that goes to the ground on the battery and right here this wire is underneath this on the frame. We're going to come over on the left side then coming down here on the right side Mount, or route this underneath the air box, still inside the frame, and these are going to be your injector plugs, and these are for your coils. So make sure you follow me on the wiring step by step as I do it. It's really, really important that you do. So first you want to unplug the orange wire from the left coil, as I've done here. Then you want to take your power commander wire, the green solid, and plug it into the orange, making sure that the boot covers it. So next you want to take your white wire with the green stripe and plug it into the coil. So once you push that all the way in there, you want to make sure that you also push that rubber boot all the way down in, into the coil. So still on the left coil, we're going to unplug the red wire and install the Power Commander wire, red with white stripe, coil like so. Make sure the boot's over that and then we're going to install this wire right here. Again, making sure that that rubber boot is pushed all the way in. Really important to follow me here. What you want to do is on the right coil, you are going to take and unplug the gray wire from the coil Take the solid blue line on the power commander, plug it in to the gray, slide that rubber boot over it, then take the white wire with the blue stripe and plug that into the coil. And when it's done, it's going to look like this. So now you're going to go ahead and put these back where they were and bolt them down. So I will be honest with you, these can be a little bit of pain in the butt to reinstall. So you just want to make sure that you take your time, get them into position on that, um, that plug, and just, you know, make sure that the wire, none of the wires are being pinched off when you're in reinstalling these pieces. So next we're going to disconnect the TPS sensor plug which is located right here. And next what you want to do is get access to the yellow wire on that. And next what we're going to do is take the included posi tap connector and connect it to that yellow wire. And once you install it, this is what it's going to look like. And next what you're going to do is take the gray wire and run it into the other end of the posi tap. And this, this is what it looks like by installing the other end and once you've screwed everything in you just want to make sure to give it a little tug to make sure everything's tight. 
and then we're going to go ahead and clip that back into the plug. Okay, so next step is going to be installing the fuel injector plugs. So you want to unplug. You're going to notice you've got a longer fuel injector plug and a short one. The longer one's going to go to the far left, and you're going to plug it into the black connector. And it does only go one way. There's a little sharp tab on one side that's going to need to go into the injector plug facing up with this little piece right here facing upwards. Plug it in like so. You'll hear it click. The stock plug. And the same thing, the stock injector, it only goes one way, so you want to make sure that you plug it into the injector plug with the tab. You can't move or turn this around, but this one, obviously, you want to make sure this is facing up or forward. And then you'll feel it click in the place. That one's installed. And then you're going to do the right side. Little tab facing up. Plug it into the plug. Feel it clip in. Install it like so. Feel it clip in. And now those are installed. So the next step we're going to do is to unplug the crate position sensor connector. And that's using these two plugs here from the Power Commander. Once again, it only goes one way. Make sure you put it in the correct way. You're going to hear it click. Same thing with this end. It should look just like that. So the next step is going to be installing the O2 optimizer. And we do that by removing these two bolts right here and accessing the reservoir behind it. And next, you want to go ahead and remove this bolt here. And next, we're going to remove this nut here. So next, we're going to remove the coolant reservoir. As you see here, just be careful that the little cap does not pull off. And by remove, I mean just remove it out of the way. Don't actually take it off the bike. So next, we're going to unplug the stock O2 sensor, which is located behind the coolant reservoir. It has four wires going into it. So you're going to unplug that and then plug in the O2 optimizer that came with your power commander. And this is what it looks like with the optimizer installed. And then what you want to do is go ahead and pull that clear vinyl boot back over it and reinstall the coolant reservoir. So last step is to go ahead and install the ground wire to the battery. And it does go without saying that the ground wire does go to the ground wire on the battery. So just a little tip. To prevent that battery nut from sliding down when you're trying to screw the bolt back into the terminal, take, uh, you know, you could actually take anything. Here we've taken a, a nail, but you could take a nail, a screw, anything to lift it up and keep it there while you screw that bolt in so it, until it catches and then you're okay. Okay, next we're going to install the tank. Remember, there's four connections. You got the fuel line, you've got the electric plug, and you got the two breather hoses. So 
So before you put all your body work back on, you want to go ahead and fire up the bike just to make sure that everything's uh, running properly. Okay, so just a quick note, what we did was we cut a just a little small notch uh, to allow for the wire to come directly out of the tray. Uh, that way it doesn't get caught up right around where you put your rear seat and just kind of makes a nice cleaner look as well. So if you have any other questions about the Power Commander, just give us a call, send us an email, or go to Facebook, hardracing.com. We are always here to help.